This week at the zoo, the S&P 500 surged 2.5% to near its February all-time high after strong jobs numbers. Hello and welcome back to the Wall Street Petting Zoo. This is our This Week at the Zoo segment in which we review the week's market news and look ahead to the coming week. I'm Christopher Smith. And I'm Robert Coburn. For the last few weeks, we here at the Wall Street Petting Zoo have been reporting on a slowdown in the economic recovery that started back in early July. Well, the big story this week is that the recovery seems to be back on track. First of all, let's talk jobs. As expected, the backward-looking jobs numbers from early July were not that great. Wednesday's ADP payroll data showed just 170,000 jobs were added in July, missing analyst expectations by almost 90%. Friday's government's jobs report was a little better, showing 1.8 million jobs added in July compared to 1.4 million expected. So a little better than the analyst forecast, but still a major slowdown from the numbers in May and June. However, those job numbers are a couple weeks old by the time they're released. The freshest data came in Thursday's report on unemployment claims for last week, and that report seemed to show strong improvement over the previous week. Initial jobless claims fell over 1.4 million last week to just under 1.2 million this week. Continuing claims fell to 16.1 million from last week's 17 million. So that's encouraging, Chris. Yeah, we also saw a slight uptick in TSA throughput this week. So it seems like people might be starting to fly a little bit more, which would be great news for the airlines. So we'll have to keep an eye on that story. Um, I think that what's really driving the jobs recovery, though, is that retail businesses are experiencing shortages all over the country. And so manufacturers are coming back online in order to cover those shortages. The last couple of weeks, we've seen some increase extremely encouraging numbers for the U.S. manufacturing sector. Uh, among other things, U.S. vehicle sales rose this month to uh, 14.5 million, beating the analyst estimate of 14 million. So that's good news for auto manufacturers. And this week's PMI reports, which take kind of a forward-looking temperature read on different sectors of the economy, showed that demand for consumer goods and healthcare products is increasing. And meanwhile, inventories of consumer goods and healthcare products are low. Um, there are shortages of nearly every commodity, and everybody's got big order backlogs and lots of strong new orders coming in. So in some of my local stores, Robert, I've been seeing like empty shelves at Target because they can't get products at stock in stock. Um, on my Starbucks ordering app, um, lots of items are grayed out because Starbucks is out of like lemonade and matcha and some other staples. Um, so I think that we're going to see agriculture, industrial, and shipping stocks keep heating up uh, over the next few weeks as everybody scrambles to meet demand and fulfill all of these order backlogs. And uh, meanwhile, a couple of these sectors that have been strong for the last few months are slowing down a bit. So we've got construction spending has been falling off now for four months after a high back in April. Um, and we've got business activity in the technology sector starting to fall off a little bit this month as well. Uh, that showed up in the PMI data this week. So, uh, you know, the, the ones that were at extremely high levels during the pandemic have been falling off a bit as the economy reopens. And meanwhile, we're seeing some strengthening in those like retail, industrial, shipping sectors. And finally, our last big story of the week is that the stimulus bill seems to have been stalled in Congress. The Republicans have proposed a $1 trillion bill, and the Democrats have proposed a $3.5 trillion uh, bill. The Democrats offered to compromise in the range of the 2 to $2.5 trillion this week, but Republicans rejected the deal and said they couldn't go much higher than $1 trillion. Off officials said that Congress is no closer to a deal this week than it was last week, which is a bit worrying because we've got an eviction crisis shaping up across the country with 40 million people at risk of becoming homeless. Now, Chris, you live in Albuquerque, right? An Albuquerque attorney said this week that hundreds or thousands of eviction notices are being issued in New Mexico every day. Here in California, we've got a big legal fight over evictions, and it looks like the landlords are going to win uh, with the, the statewide eviction ban lifted on August 14th. 
in some places like San Diego County, people are already being evicted illegally. All I can say is Congress better get something done fast or there's going to be a slaughter in the housing market and a lot of people could lose their homes. Yeah, that's a that's a big issue, Robert. All right, let's talk uh, stocks that we watched last week. What were you watching, Robert? So last week I was watching uh, CDW and they announced their second quarter financials this past week. And unfortunately, they missed expectations by a quarter of a billion dollars. Um, this, of course, caused the stock to drop. However, the quarter of a billion dollars they missed by uh, they missed by is only about five percent of their total overall revenue. So the stock didn't move more than five percent. Activision Blizzard announced their second quarter earnings, and they, of course, had an incredible year-over-year -year growth with nearly half a billion monthly active users in comparison to last year, where they only had about 300 million monthly active users. And uh, Take-Two Interactive stock jumped nearly 10% as they reported their earnings. And according to research firm NPD, spending on video games in the U.S. has seen double-digit percentage growth this year, with June having a record 26% growth. And finally, I was also watching Bitcoin, and despite being up this week, it's still teasing that 12,000 mark and hasn't uh, hasn't breached that since it uh, popped up uh, over it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Seems like it's got some pretty strong resistance there. And also the dollar has sort of halted a little bit. So uh, I think that uh, Bitcoin and gold and silver also won't move higher unless we see the dollar sort of continue its decline. And the dollar is at a pretty, pretty over, oversold RSI right now. So I think that uh, it's probably unlikely to move much lower from here before it gets a little bounce. Um, last week, I was watching the pharmaceutical company Merck after its really strong earnings report and antiviral clinical trial announcement the previous week. Uh, Merck gained about 1% total this week, so not a strong performance. Uh, it was up quite a bit more than that early in the week, but then it pulled back uh, some later in the week. Um, but Merck has support from a couple of major weekly moving averages, about $80 per share. So I expect it to continue higher from here. It's it's just hovering right above those moving averages. So I think we'll probably find some support here and move higher from here. I've also been uh, watching for the XLF S&P 500 Financials ETF to make a bullish trend line cross. And it did that this week. Uh, on Wednesday, we got a uh, the PMI report showed a nice increase of business activity in the sector. So it uh, looks like the sector is strengthening. And then on uh, Thursday and Friday, we got some really strong jobs numbers. That's really important for the financials ETF because, of course, people having jobs is important for them uh, paying their mortgages and paying their credit card debt and stuff like that. So uh, all of that caused uh, some bullish, bullish uh, price action in financials, and they made a nice cross across that trend line. They kind of teased across the trend line on Wednesday and Thursday, and then they uh, crossed with uh, enthusiasm on Friday after that big jobs report. So I bought a couple of call options uh, on the financials ETF on Friday morning, and I gained about 50% on those. So I had a pretty good week overall. Uh, how about next week, Robert? What are you going to be watching? So this next week, I will continue to watch Bitcoin and video game stocks, specifically Tencent, as Trump has set his targets on part of Tencent's vast portfolio, specifically their WeChat app. Uh, Trump signed an executive order on Friday, which would seek to block transactions after 45 days. Um, the stock took a hit after the news hit, with the stock tumbling down nearly 8%, which sucks for me because I have a small portion of Tencent stock. However, the stock continues to stumble. I will probably double down and buy more. Uh, what about you, Chris? What are you be watching this week? So I'm going to keep watching banks. Uh, right now, we've got the XLF ETF at uh, 24.84 per share, and it's got resistance just above that from a major moving average at 25 per share. So I think we might see a little pullback from that moving average early next week, and that'll be an opportunity to buy more on the dip. Uh, I do believe that XLF will push through that moving average and hit at least 26.70 sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, and Bank of America and Berkshire Hathaway may lead the way up. Warren Buffett's company Berkshire Hathaway has been buying Bank of America shares like crazy, and that has caused option traders to buy uh, lots of Bank of America as well. And Berkshire also bought back $5 billion worth of its own stock last quarter 
and reported pretty good results. So I'm seeing lots of interest from options traders in those two companies. Personally, I think that uh, Citigroup is actually a better value in banking. So I bought a little bit of Bank of America just to kind of follow the crowd and benefit from some of the hype. And I've also followed my own judgment and made a larger bet on Citigroup. So we'll see what happens with those. And in addition to banks, I'm also watching CVS and Hewlett Packard Enterprises. CVS reported some strong earnings last week, and it looks like it could make a move from the current price of 65 to my new short-term target price of 67. There's a nice little trend line there. So uh, I think that we'll probably see that this week. And Hewlett Packard Enterprises is an underrated technology stock that uh, looks like a pretty good value. Um, it missed the big move up in technology stocks, so it's still like nicely priced. And it has been gaining momentum and could make a 15% move upward ahead of its September earnings. So I think that we could see some nice, uh, nice move upward in Hewlett Packard. And so I've got a couple option calls on that one as well. All right, folks, if you heard anything on the podcast today that was helpful to you, please give us a like, share, or comment on YouTube. We really appreciate your support. We don't do any uh, paid advertising for the show, so it's pure word of mouth that uh, helps us get the word out about the podcast. Put lots of work in, so we really appreciate your support. If you'd like to support the podcast financially, uh, you could click the promotional uh, referral link underneath our YouTube video to Webull, and you could open a Webull account. If you open a Webull account and deposit $100, then we get a couple free stocks, and that helps support the podcast. Thanks so much for your support, and we'll see you back at the zoo next week. See you.